Welcome to today's HTML coding lesson. We've started a number of lessons focusing on JavaScript and HTML. We've had four lessons in which we've done this, so we should have some understanding of the basics of HTML. We've written all our HTML code in Notepad. As you can see here, I've just opened up Notepad. This is what I'm going to use to write in my code. Just going to center it nicely in the middle of this page. We know that we're going to add in those bigger than and smaller than signs to write it in. HTML. That little bit of code is speaking to our browser. It's telling our browser that we're dealing with hypertext markup language known as HTML. We're showing the boundaries where the HTML is found with these HTML tags. But that's not all. We've got to do our ending tag forward slash HTML. And we close it off with a ending tag like that. Okay, let's select that. And we have the forward slash there showing the ending of the HTML tags. But this is the beginning and ending. And that's where we're going to hold all of our hypertext markup language code. It's going to be between these two markers. The HTML beginner marker. And now we're writing in the header. Just close that off. We're going to just write the ending of the header, forward slash, H-E-A-D-E-R, header, and close that off as well. We have added a header within the HTML tags, so the header is contained within the HTML. And now we're going to put a body, we're going to end it off with a forward slash, B-O-D-Y, body, and we have the body and a header now within the HTML. So they are contained within the HTML coding. You can see that as I've showed you now. And now I'm going to type in, I showed you how to do comments. So I'm going to show you how to do that again. Just follow me. Got that exclamation and two dashes. And whatever we type in now will be understood to be comments and not code. So why will we write comments? They are descriptions of what we are trying to do so that you understand exactly what's going on. Because sometimes it gets very complicated and you just don't know where and what's being done. I'm just going to write that this is an HTML structure and close off my comments like that. Two dashes and that tag at the end. So this will not be understood to be code. It's very important to be clear on what you are trying to do when you do any form of coding. Why do people comment in their code? Very often people work in teams. It's important to communicate to your team member what you have done. Let's just highlight the comment area to see it more clearly. There you go. That's the comment area. This is HTML structure. I was explaining why comments are useful. I'd like to just return to that. I use comments in a sort of self-talk, a way to speak to myself to understand the logic of my code. So it's important to clarify the logic of what you're trying to do. Our code needs to be set out properly so that it works properly. You have to try to find the mistakes in the code. Because at the end of it all, it has to be a working system. And so laying out your code properly, as well as these comments, helps you in that regard. If you lay it out properly, it makes more sense. It's more logical. We work much better in an ordered system. And so therefore you need to be very organized. The way you lay out your code is extremely important. It makes it more understandable to you or the other programmers that you're working with in a team. In the last few lessons, I showed you the title tag. This was placed in the header. So I'd like to show you that again. It's going to fit in in the header. So we're going to just highlight the header. Let's do that. We highlight the header. And we know that our title will go within the header. So think very carefully where that would be. It's going to be within those two tags. I'm going to type in title. Oops, uh, full stop there. Title. And the closing of the title with a forward slash title. There we go. We know that this title will form a tab on our web page. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to type in my mathematics as a title, which doesn't really make that much sense. But after saving it, I'll show you the tab. So we go to File, Save As, and I save it as a file name with our HTML extension, .html at the end. 
So we've got that as the extension to indicate that we're talking about hypertext markup language. The browser on our computer will pick it up. The browser on our computer will read it as HTML, whether it be Safari, Edge, Chrome, or anything like that. And we go and press save. Now we're back at our HTML, so let's have a good look at this. We're going to add in a lot more interesting features. I'm just going to open this in Chrome. If you look over there, I'm pointing at My Mathematics. That's the title. And if I right click and go down to View Page Source, you can see here's our source code. And you can see our HTML tags. And My Mathematics, the title, is shown very clearly over there. My Mathematics will be the tab that's shown in our web page. There you go, within the title. There you see it again, My Mathematics. And there is our HTML in our notepad once more. So we've returned to the place where we write our code, notepad, the text editor. And from here we can add more code. I've added a body section in, as you can see over here. The body section contains all the HTML code for the HTML document. We are going to add a header to our code. So we're going to do that in this open section. I'm just going to press the tab button on my keyboard. So I'm going to press tab and that moves the cursor there. H1 and we know we're going to give it a name, a unique name, an ID, ID equals and we'll give it a name in. So we're going to go speech marks and that's the ID, the unique name of this part of our body section. It's called a header and we'll call it my sum my sum my sum will be the name of the header h1 we can now refer to it in our code whenever we call my sum whenever we call my sum we will be knowing that we are referring to h1 which is the header in our html document we have given h1 a name called my sum whenever we refer to the header h1 we'll know that we can refer to it as my sum. I'm going to type some text in my sum. Button to test to test. Click on button to test. That's good. Let's just select that. Click on button to test. And now we need to add in our ending tag. So we're going to do that. We should all know how that looks. This writing click on button to test is urging us to click on a button that we're going to make in a minute. So we close it off with H1. That's the ending tag of our header. Once again, using a forward slash in the header ending. These tags, like the forward slash, are distinct features of HTML. What I mean is they characterize the language, the type of code that we are writing. What we are writing is going to be read by a browser what we are writing here is going to be read by a browser. We're going to put a line break to separate the header, which we called my sum, from the button. So we're putting br forward slash click on button. Click on button will be on one line, and then we'll have a actual button on the next line. The br over there, br forward slash will separate them. When Chrome moves through the lines of our code, it will know that when it gets to the break code, that it needs to go to another line. Let's move on to the button, B-U-T-T-O-N, button, and we're gonna go on click. So we're talking about an event. When we click on the button, something has to happen. So we're going on click. We're declaring that we want something to happen when we click on the button. On click equals, and we're gonna write a functions name in here. We'll do a multiplication app, so we'll write multiply round brackets. Oops, I nearly made the same mistake as I did in the last lesson. Our function must always be within the quotation marks, within those speech marks. We must have multiply with the round brackets within our speech marks. I'm just going to make the font bigger. So we go to format, font, choose the font size, and everything's far more seeable. That makes it far easier to see, especially for those sitting at the back. We have an on-click event being triggered, calling a function called multiply. The function's name is multiply. Round brackets and the function's name are in quotes. The proper way of writing our code, it's important to strictly adhere 
to the conventions of the language structure and so and so we find the function within the double quotes let's add some writing to the button we'll do that now and this will go on the right hand side of that quote over there so we're just going to write check c-h-e-c-k check and we'll bring in the ending tag with a forward slash button and close it off like that that tag shows the ending of the button control because remember the button is a control let's just recap what we have here we have defined a button we have defined a button with an on click event which calls multiply so the on click event calls multiply what is multiply a function and what is going to be written in the button the word check now don't try get too caught up trying to understand all of these things when everything comes together at the end it'll make a great deal of sense a lot of understanding comes through interacting and constructing and reflecting afterwards on what you've done so you'll have to study this and I'm just writing in check answer I'm trying to be a little bit more descriptive check answer says a lot more than just the word check the user of your program must clearly just know what to do and therefore it's very important to be able to be descriptive so they understand what to do so you're always thinking about how user-friendly your program is that function multiply is going to do all the working out for us it's going to work out the answer of two numbers being multiplied and we have those round brackets interesting how it's found within the button triggered by the on click event I'm talking about the function that we named multiply I'm saying these things over and over again as it's all part of our learning getting to understand how this all works I'm going to make the font a bit smaller so we can see it a bit better that's taken it down a bit and we're still selecting the function multiply now functions are part of the script so we're going to write when we call a function multiply we're calling something that is found in the script part of the HTML so we're going to write here script s c r i p t script and we're going to have our ending of forward slash s c r i p t our function will be in the scripting part that we've just shown here I'm just tabbing it out so everything fits in nicely this is where we're going to write our function what was the name of our function I'm not going to give you the answer to that and we're going to declare our variables we're going to declare the variables between the script tags that will be the two numbers that are multiplied the answer and our score these will be numbers that the computer comes up with and the grade fours to grade sevens have become familiar with the random feature used in purple mesh here we're going to use javascript to do the same thing so we declare our variable var space n for a number a small n showing that we're working with a number first number the first number in the multiplication sentence first number semicolon that is how we declare our variable n first number first number needs to be multiplied by a second number so our second variable var space n for a small number second number and semicolon now when first number and second number are multiplied with each other we need to find an answer so we need an answer variable so var n answer and that will be i'll just call a n s semicolon we need to have an indication of our score so we're going to declare a variable called score we could have called this variable points once again ending with a semicolon so we have declared a number of variables within the script the variables are declared within the script I'm going to show you how to write comments in the script section double forward slash these are variables so that is a comment in the script part of our once again I must say comments will not be read as code another line of comments and a whole lot of equal signs 
and we've got two lines of comments. I'm just going to select that for you. So you can see that this section is not going to be read as code. It's written there to help you understand what you are doing. You do not want to get lost and confused while doing this. And again, I stress the point of structure, order, and logic. The structure and layout of your code is going to help you to make sense of it. It's quite good to follow the layout and example shown by those who are quite good at coding. I've declared the variable score to be zero, which is the beginning of our test. We start off with a score of zero. Now let's do a little bit of calculating. So we're going to use our first number. I'm going to just type in first number. First number is equal to, and we're going to go, we're working with maths, so we're going to go maths floor, which is a function within JavaScript, which is all about making an integer of a number. Then we add our rounds to it. So we've got a two round brackets like that and a semicolon. We're going to add a random function within these round brackets. So maths floor will have a random function called within it, math dot random, and we know we must end a function with rounds as well. So we're calling the random function, which is going to find a random number, and then we're making it into an integer through floor, the function called floor. Those in grade six and seven should be quite familiar with the, we have a bit of complications in getting our number our first number we multiply our random number by 12 so it's star 12 and 12 being the upper bound number that we want to multiply with so we have 12 because we're doing times table 1 to 12 so we're going to have 12 is the top number then we have 12 take away 3 and the reason why I'm taking away 3 is because that is the lower bound. We're going to be working with numbers from 3 to 12. It's not going to be asking us the 1 times table and the 2 times table. And then we say plus 3. It all seems so overwhelming, doesn't it? So we're multiplying our random number by the upper bound number, which is 12. And we say taking it away from the lower bound number, the 3. And then we're adding the lower bound number. And that will bring us first number. And this, all of this complication over here that I've highlighted will bring us first number. Now, when we do the second number, we could just copy the code. So we'll go, and here we're going to go do the same thing with our second number. So I'm going to just select this code. I'm going to copy it. Right click. Copy. Copy. And we'll just paste it over here. And we're going to just change the name of the variable. First number will be changed to second number. So I'm going to select, copy that bit of code, and I'll just replace that variable name with second number. So now we have the exact we're choosing. We have the same code that's finding a first number and a second number between 3 and 12. And we're going to just put in some more comments, forward slash, the two numbers in the sum just to practice our commenting to keep an understanding of what's going on in our code and there i'm going to just put those small little dashes to show a heading we have two numbers that are generated by the computer first number and second number these two variables first number and second number will be used to generate our answer. So we need to bring in the answer bit. So I'm going to just break over here to bring in a line and tab. We want to lay everything. We want our code to be neat. And that puts answer directly under the previous two lines. Answer equals. And we know that our answer will be derived by the first number multiplied by the second number. So we're going to add in the answer equals first number, that one over there, multiplied, and I'm just going to copy that, and we're going to just bring it in over here, 
star for multiplication and we're going to take this variable's name copy it and place it after that star so what how we would read this is answer equals first number multiplied by the second number and we end off with our semicolon I would like the statement of whether I got it right or wrong to be shown in the heading section which we called my sum and that I'd like to show you so the writing that's shown in my sum in this heading over here that I'm selecting will change every time we do a sum to see whether we are right or wrong the word wording click on button to test will change it will have something else written in there so that would be substituted with something different it might be well done you got it right or that was wrong and also give us the score we've still got to add in the submitted answer that is the input of the user who's doing the test so this is indicating we're going to need to add another variable we're going to need to add a variable that will show the input of the user. So let's call it n my answer and semicolon. And we also need to add the variable declaration var before semicolon to end it off. We're going to just add a variable by answer, my answer, my spelling's terrible. I keep on typing badly, my answer a variable that is holding the users on and this prompt is showing you what the user will provide as an answer there i'm going to write what is and then add a number sentence to that for example what is two times six what is four times three and that's what it's going to ask in the prompt all the numbers used will be generated by the computer random numbers as i've already shown I will have to use the variable first number as well as second number with an equal sign. So first number, I'm going to just copy that, put it in here. First number, so we've got the statement and then we're adding on first number, the variable to the statement what is. And then we're going to bring in the times sign with a space between it, the times in the middle and the space. And we're putting these plus signs to indicate that we are joining the what is to the number sentence and I'm going to bring in second number so we paste that over there and then obviously we're going to put a plus a plus to indicate that we are adding on a equal sign so we'll go plus and speech marks let's put a question mark speech marks and those would be in the round brackets of our prompt the prompt is going to provide a little input box that the user would use to input their answer so they'll type in their answer and that'll feed into this system what is and the number sentence will just help the user to know what to type in and the two number variables first number and second number will be numbers in the range of 3 to 12. i'm just going to set the size of the font here so that more can be seen and let's just scroll to the side you can see that a little bit clearer Let's just see if we can get the whole script section or the script element in our window. So let's just scroll there. And there you can see the end. The forward slash with script is showing that that's the end of that element. And the beginning part is right up top there where it says the these are variables. I'm just going to recap everything that we have here just so that it's very clear in our minds very often when one does programming one reiterates goes over things to create some sort of logic to understand the system and also to be able to learn that's how you upgrade your programming skills and become far more creative first number second number score and answer ending that with our semicolon those variables are just storing little bits of information for us we've got these variables that are going to help us so now we're going to build our function so so we're going to need to write function f-u-n-c-t-i-o-n -N, function then we're going to write the name of our function which we remember was on the on click event called multiply so we're going to write multiply and we're going to put in our round brackets and then we're going to place in our curly brackets these curly braces are just part of defining a function so you'd have a curly brackets there 
and we'll also have an ending. So this is called a function. Our name of our function is called multiply, and there's our first curly brace. I'm going to need to move that brace to the next line, so I'm going to put it over there, and I'm going to end my ending brace at the bottom over here. So if we select that part, we've got the whole function fitting into there. And this is the inner part because it's between the two braces, the two curlies. Then we have one or two conditions arising. Either the user got the answer right or wrong. So we're going to need to use an if statement. If the user gets the answer right, our program will need to do something. For example, add a point. On the other hand, if he gets it wrong, we might need to take away a point. So our program needs to react appropriately. We're going to need to see whether the user's answer is the same as the actual answer. We will know that if the answer is right, we'll do something, or else we will make the assumption that the user got it wrong. So we're going to use this if else statement. And we're going to write this function below the variables, the declaration of all these variables. We're going to put it off after that. So we're going to just move down a little bit. And let's just bring in a bit of space there. If, and we know we're going to test our answer to see if that actual answer is the same as the input answer. So we're going to take our variable, my answer, which is the answer that was given by the user in the prompt. We're going to put it over there. And we're going to now need to test to see whether that answer is the same as the actual answer. So we're going to do that. We're going to use double equals. These double equals are to test whether the two numbers are the same. And we're going to put in answer. That's the actual answer. And we close with our rounds. So we've got our round brackets. And that's testing if they are the same. Just going to move it in. I've tabbed it in to make everything look a lot smarter. So that it looks, it's easy to follow. And we're going to bring in after our round brackets at the end, we're going to bring in our braces again. So we've got a brace there, and we'll have our brace at the bottom. And we're going to bring in further code in between these braces. We're going to feed in the answer as being correct or incorrect in the document section. So document, and we're going to go get element by ID. Get element by ID means we are referring to that section of the HTML. Get element by ID, and here we're going to write the name of that section. Now, if you scroll up here, you can see we call that my sum. And we had written in click on button to test that was written inside that section, that header section. So we're going to now take this and we're going to write my sum in here. So we're going to go speech marks, my sum, capital S sum, close the speech marks, close the rounds. And now we're going to put dot inner, just going to get rid of this, dot inner HTML, L, and then we're going to put an equal sign and we're going to indicate well done or some sort of statement. So we'll go with speech marks, well done, you got it right. And just put a full stop, close our speech marks with a space at the end. So that header is going to change and it's going to have, well done, you got it right. This will overwrite whatever was written in there before. We wrote in there, click on button to test. So click on button to test will be overwritten and we'll read now, well done, you got it right. And we're going to add in the variable, the score variable. We're going to increment that. We're going to bring up the score by one. So we put a plus sign to glue the score and we're going to add one to the score. We're going to put that in round brackets, so round brackets there, and we'll put a round brackets over there, and we just need to put a semicolon at the end. There we go. And that finishes that part of it, when the user gets the answer right. Let's just go over all of this a bit. We are calling a method within the document object called getElementById, which finds my sum which is in the inner HTML section. Basically, you need to just copy this down and to see if it works. It's just a test. So here we've got the else, which is going to show the condition 
if the user got it wrong. So now we're moving on to the wrong part if the user got the answer wrong. So we're going to bring in the same condition and we're going to also copy this bit of code and we're going to bring it in. So let's copy and we're going to bring it in over here. Let's just paste it. And we're going to take away the score because remember, if they got it wrong, we need to take away one mark. So every time they get it wrong, B subtract A, the score goes down. We definitely can't have well done, you got it right. So we're going to write, oh no, it's not right. And then obviously taking away a point in the score. I think we have enough now to test our code. So we can go into the saving of it and put it into HTML. So we go save as, and here we give the file name. So I'm just going to put my file name over here. And obviously we put the .html at the end and that would save it. So it would be now ready for the browser to open. And I'd like to test it. There we go. So everything looks fine. If I click on our check answer, I click on it. And we're going to fill in our answer over here. It's reading as 11 times 9. So we're going to type in this prompt. Let's go for the correct answer. We're going to type in 99. We'll go OK. And you can see it's overwritten what was there before. Well done, you got it right. And there's a 1 at the end. That's our score. 4 times 9. And I'll just type in the wrong answer. Oh no, it's not right. Minus 1. Now there's a bit of a mistake because it shouldn't read minus 1. So we'll need to fix that. We'll need to debug that part, that minus one. And we're going to get to that now. So let's just close this. And we return to our code. And let's just scroll down. We need to start with a score of zero. So that's one thing we know. We're going to need to adjust our score. So we're going to write in score equals score plus one. So let's do that. We're going to have our score, which could be any number. For example, say your score is four is equal to and then it'll be score which is four plus one so each time it'll readjust and change the score we always end with then semicolon let's just highlight that so we copy that and we're going to bring it into the condition of being wrong and then we're going to bring in that plus will be a takeaway so that's taking away a score so that should do for now let's have a look at this and we'll go save and let's go about testing to see if it works. And so we're going to open up our HTML with our browser. There it is. Click on button to test. And let's go through the testing process. And we're reading 3 times 11. So let's put in 33. OK. Well done. You got it right. You got one point. Our score's gone up by one. 5 times 8. And let's go and put this one in. 40. OK. And you can see it's gone up to 2. And 9 times 9. And let's try a wrong answer. So I'm just going to type in anything over here. Click OK. And it says, oh no, it's not right. And we've got 1. So I'm, we've dig taken it down by 1. And here it says 11 times 4. So we go with that one and it's gone up by 1. It seems to be working. We We have succeeded in what we wanted to do. Let's have a good look at the source code. View page source. And here you can see the HTML with the actual lines shown on the numbers on the left. Those are showing the actual line numbers. And you can see here's our HTML. Everything seems to be working well. We're just having a good look at the HTML code. But all is working well. So we can see we've got our function, multiply with braces. That's quite clear. And then we've got our variables that are declared. And we've got a condition with the if statement on a condition of correct answer. And the else would indicate that the user did not get it right. And those are contained within the script part of our HTML. You can see it all beautifully laid out. And you can even see the layout of my code makes it quite understandable. If you work in a very messy way, it becomes very difficult to understand the logic. You've got to be very systematic and orderly in the layout of your coding.